Hey, everybody, welcome back to The Verse. We have a very special episode today. We are getting into all kinds of things on the blockchain. We have gone to carbon credits. We have seen things become tokenized. And now here we are with one of the, which I think is the first movie that will be launched on the Pulse chain. I can't wait to hear more about how this works, how this is going to apply to us. Everybody, welcome Basketball in today. Uh, we met in some Telegram channels, and it's been a delight to get to know this man, and I want you to get to know a little bit more about him. So how are you doing today, man? Great to be here. Thanks so much for having me on. I know it gets a little crazy in our all those secret Telegrams that we have we have cooking out there, but uh, yeah, excited to share a little A bit about my project and why it is and, and have an asset on the blockchain um, and be some of the first of its kind so yeah that's great um you know when i think of uh blockchain and hex it reminds me sometimes of the there's a video on richard's site and one of the girls on the video she says you know internet we just thought it was going to be such a trivial thing and then now here we are web3 and we can get into concepts like uh, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, and uh, movies on a block. I mean, real estate on a blockchain. How far can this stuff go, man? What What do you see in that? So I, I actually think where it can go, it's very scary places. And, and it, it's probably going to make a lot of people uncomfortable because I, I actually think that, you know, I, I don't think you'll see a lot of this innovation in the U.S. because of all the securities laws. But I think in other countries and other places that are are more okay with uh, a little lack of regulation, you're going to start seeing just completely unregulated uh, stock markets on the blockchain that are represented by real assets. So what, what you can do with these, then these NFTs is that you can tie them to real cash flow and real businesses and then allow people to trade basically securities uh, globally and then share and invest and receive profit globally just through crypto. And so that's sort of the the door that Web3 is opening, but people don't really notice know that yet or realize it yet because they're just speculating on images. But it's not really the images. It's really the technology that's going to be driving all these crazy innovations. And so what we're trying to do is take a little bit of a step forward in that direction and using some of the Web3 technology and, and try and um, leverage the low fee aspect that Pulse Chain has to be able to deliver some Web3 value that's actually, you know, backed by cash flow. I mean, it, it sounds like a, a brilliant move. I mean, and if it, going back to the basics, you know, if you were to, to just make a movie, that's something that you've been probably what doing your, your whole life making movies. Yeah. The, the three posters on the back are the three movies I've made. So I okay. made three movies before. So, so uh, I can just imagine a time before you were making movies and you never thought of a way to tie blockchain into what you're doing. And now that's become a reality. Does that make you feel more like, like, this is like, this is where I derive this purpose from is because all, all of these things that I do are, are starting to mesh together in this one world that's block that is blockchain. Is that? Yeah. I, that's yeah. I think what, what's exciting about the blockchain element, which is new is that it, uh, a lot of what, the, the, the problems that we have in the filmmaking world is dealing with gatekeepers. So we have the financiers and they, they want to, uh, you know, they want you to have the right connections. They want you to have the right, whatever characteristics. Um, and uh, I think that the blockchain can really democratize the way that we really do film. Um, and so that can mean globally establishing a community that makes cool film projects together and shares in the value together. Um, I think that the the one mistake that we do see a lot of um, crypto film web three people that we see right now is that is I don't think that they've quite figured out the right model because they're a little bit scared of securities laws and so what what they'll do is they will they will basically sell you images or the movie itself and and kind of use the web three as just a distribution platform but I actually think that the real value is in in being able to share and receive profits. That's what I think the true value is. Um, and I think that it is kind of going to get into like a regulatory hairy in the future when people start doing it like crazy, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so, so yeah, but yeah, I never thought it would, it would, you know, 
it would unlock doors like I think it will for a lot of filmmakers too like I don't want to be the first one I, I would like to ideally you know create a model to do this sort of thing and help other filmmakers to to be able to do something similar but but it the case could be made though that you may be in, you know in a space of some of the furthest innovation towards this direction because like you said if you're talking about the gatekeeping of several whatever industry there's probably going on in so many different industries but yeah. for instance i think you know as americans we know really kind of if you're versed at all you, you know really what's going on in hollywood and that it's it's all kind of a crazy business you can just go read the weinstein uh court cases if you wanted to to be able to see what kind of things go on so to me i think it's amazing that you're here in this space and you're willing to devote your time to not only doing what you love which is making the movies but then using your love and your passion to try to completely change an industry because that's what music needs that's what um movies and entertainment and television need so i think you know i just have to at very most commend you for what you're doing because it seems you know like a huge undertaking to try to be able to take on and and then to be able to figure out ways to uh put in financial components um I want to hear more about what you're saying about the securities, because it seems as if that's kind of like, and maybe you don't want to completely elaborate on that. If that's not like your mm -hmm. bread and butter or, or something you don't, you know, but you said you want to share this with other film community. Yeah. So, so what, what I'll say is that we're in this very, um, we're, we're in this, we're in this area where, everyone's sort of trying to figure out what the situation is because th there isn't a lot of regulatory clarity. Um, I think what, what we do know, at least with the film industry, is that there are exemptions that allow for businesses to be able to do what I do. Um, and part of that is that you need to keep the raise capped. So I can't, you know, raise more than a million dollars um, to stay exempt. Uh, I also... Um, I can't public, I can't publicly make a crowd fund site. I need to say, please join me in my telegram, get to know us, and then we'll invite you to invest. And so our, there are, there are things that we still need to do to stay compliant. And I think that a lot of their, uh, filmmakers are kind of afraid to, to like learn the rules, follow the rules, especially since they've been able to get away with just selling worthless images and then fund their film that way. But I'm really trying to set a new model to actually bring like shareholder value. Um, cause I, I think it's sort of crazy that the way that it's, it's sort of just like these regulations are so annoying because it just makes things worse for everyone. Cause what happens is that you have, you're basically telling people, Hey, you're too dumb to be able to buy something that you receive profit back in, but you're smart enough to be able to buy a worthless image. And that's what's happening. So it's just <laughs> total, it's just total clown world. And so um, I'm really trying to pave the way for like a compliant way to do this sort of stuff. Um, so that's why I say it's an investment. I, it's not a sacrifice. It's an investment. There are rules. You're, that are you're a up. real degenerate. You're a real, you belong on this channel here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're all afraid. And they also, you know, they, they don't, they, you know, they feel like that they can get away with just minting that. And it's just right. It, it's not sustainable because they're just basically they're like oh buy this image or buy this character ip and then you, you just pray for speculation you just pray that this character will be some sort of random collectible backed by nothing and uh i work in the traditional finance world for my regular job <clears throat> and i just can't wrap my head around it like i just can't and so if i was going to do something like this i, I need it to to go like um how I'm doing it. And there are certain things like I, I think um, that I'm working with like a web three lawyer on like, um, I, I might need to make to form the investor wallets into a DAO for a late legal structure um, that I might need to just uh, really guard how you can transfer what what your investment looks like. Um, and there are things like that. But the goal is to make it like a replicable model for other people and that it, it is compliant. And it is still exempt from the sec so that's sort of what i'm trying to do and it's just it's a lot of reading <laughs> I, I bet man um so let's say like let's take this like i say i'll, I'll i'm the i'm a teacher so i'm like a broad overview kind of guy and i want to i want to get broad pictures so say i'm a new or say I'm um, somebody who's smart enough to buy a JPEG, but <laughs> I, 
and yeah. and and I want to go in and I want to and I find out about your movie. What does it look like? What does it look like? How do I get in? How do I get in? What am I getting? What am I receiving? Yeah. So 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 the way it works is you know you join our Telegram, we get to know you, and then when our raise opens up, which should be July seventh, God willing, um, you you'll be able to. Uh, you know, fill out the proper disclosures, sign a quick contract, and then you'll have access to the address to be able to send your investment. And it should match kind of the, you know, what you put in your form or whatever. Um, and then uh, in about, so then we'll use the funds to make the best movie we can, but my production company won't take a fee. I'm not taking a salary. We're, okay. we're using all the money to make the best pot to sign the best, the highest tier talent that we can, um, you know, celebrities that people will recognize and make the 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 best movie possible and make create the most value for investors um a lot of movies don't do that the, they they will pay themselves a big production fee to make sure that they get a lot of money no matter what um and they don't really care what they sell the movie for so i try and structure my deals so that ever everyone's incentives are aligned so that we're all kind of winning together and that if i if if you're losing i'm losing if you're winning i'm winning and i think that that's sort of how it should work um but the, the fact of the matter is that this is more than just about one movie so we i mean we i don't even think we've touched on any of the specifics of yeah the movie, i'll, I'll tell about... you my vision i'll tell you my long-term vision so my, my long-term vision is that we create a community that can actually be like a um a, a dow that's dedicated to my production company and we fund a movie every single year so uh, i you know i i make a i try and make a movie every single year and part of the reason is that um, because of Section 181 of the tax code, um, every investment that you make into a film the year that it's in production, you get to immediately write off your income. And so if, you, if, you are make, if you're producing a movie every single year, you can always roll your tax liability forward and never pay tax. Um, okay. And so it's a very to ta tax efficiently keep investing in your projects. You could take some, invest some, and then you just keep rolling it forward. Um, and but what would be cool if we built a community to do this all together? Because I've just been doing it just me, so I'll just invest a ton of my own money, write it off, not pay tax, sell the movie, and just and then roll it forward and do it again and again and again. And I think it'd be cool to involve more people in this because I think you, you know one you you don't pay tax, two you make a really awesome movie together. And three, we usually sell it for more than we made it for and then distribute that back. So I think well, it's a really the, cool deal. It's, 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 and it's like music to my ears when you have the rise of all, you know, obviously all these streaming platforms and things that you can go into with, you know, having that movie, the face of a movie, but then the back, you know, the, uh, the, the backside of this movie is this financial machine that's going to yeah. end up, uh, you know, going from a small snowball to a huge snowball at the end of this. I, I definitely. Yeah, I, I would. I would love to build. Them. I would love to build the greatest decentralized film DAO the world's ever seen, and and we we would decide what projects together we want to back, what filmmakers we want to back. Um, I think that we would have like a very uh, sophisticated vetting structure. So I know if I had if I had to design it, the filmmaker that we would back, it would be. One, they have to have a track record of making profitable films. Like, I don't care if you had to make a small one, but but you need to have experience making and selling a movie. You also need to have like a good end market in mind. What's your distribution plan? So is your, what kind of movie are you making? If you're just going to make like a romantic comedy in New York, good luck. Because it's, you know, unless you've got like crazy talent attached, it's not going to be very marketable. And so you need to have all these things in mind so that you can hit the standard of being able to deliver profits back to your investors. Uh, Cause it's really hard. Mo most filmmakers I think struggle with this because I think a lot of them just want to make their passion project. And then they're not really into it for the business side. Like I, I, I'm not a filmmaker by trade. I'm, I went to Yale for my MBA and I'm just a business guy. So I, I'm more in like, how do we create the financial engine to make movies and not pay taxes together? And then my partner, who's my best friend from college, he's the director, he's the creative genius and also has the track record and the leadership on set and all the stuff to make that happen. You know, we kind of work together on this production company to just make everything happen. Well, I have to say, I believe DAOs are the future of where all of this is headed and we're going to have 
gals that are household names, like some of the film companies that may be out now. And it's, I appreciate you for taking just even the time to talk to us because who knows where you're going to be in the next 10 years, man. Uh, it's, it's so great to be able to be in web. Uh, dude, I, I, I will tell you, I will tell you, I, I always, and to everyone listening, I always remember my friends. So <laughs> every, every one of every one of my past investors, I'm still close with everyone who has me on stream is going to be in the credits of, of Mooch. It doesn't matter how big of a film it is, you know, you're going to be in the credits um, awesome. and any streamer that has me on um, because I, I love to say thanks to those who help us along the way, uh, whether that's a business or, you know, someone helping us promote the project or an investor or an investor's favorite project. You know, um, I like part of the, what made the, my last movie possible was Hex and its price appreciation. So I made Hex a sponsor of my last film and happy to make projects that people, investors really like, sponsors. Uh, so that's typically how I want to operate. And yeah, 10 years, who, who knows? I mean, I think that we hopefully we've built a, a, a great, viable production company that continues to deliver value year after year after year. That'd be amazing. Well, I, I'm glad to get that full picture overview and seeing because it's not it, I see that it's not just about a movie and I do want to get in a little bit into about this particular movie but I do see that you're trying to create this entire entity that's going to really be able to change the way that these things are done so yeah uh, yeah I will say it starts with this movie so the, this movie is me seeing what the appetite is for this sort of product so I'm putting this movie out there and I hope you'll 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 join me on my telegram and make and you know tell your friends about it um but it, it starts with is the appetite there for this film and this sort of product and if, if we hit our cap then i think yes then it is the appetite is there and then we could start investing in sort of the, the roadmap and technology to you know keep uh rolling it forward and building a sustainable business model out of it well one of um I don't know if there's a better place to launch it on than the pulse chain. I think with all the economic energy and frenzy that's going to be taking place in that area, people are truly going to see the ingenuity behind this and they're going to want to get behind it. Uh, they're, they're, yeah, the, the other the ground floor. The other thing about why pulse chain is because I want to be able to distribute profits without set, paying a bunch of fees. And I don't want to have to have a claim function because you'll see a lot of projects that you know, would, would be like, yeah, you're entitled to money, but you just have to go to our website and click click claim and run the function to get your money. And I think that that, that isn't really the future of, of you know, blockchain finance, uh, because it, that's not how traditional finance works. Like, you, you know, you have a bank account, you, you don't go to your 20 websites to collect all the different monies that are coming to you from all your different investments, you, you, you get it all just automatically going to your bank account. And so, I also want to design like an airdrop system to get profits back to people and just have it accumulate in their wallet. Because I, I think that that's sort of the future where things are going is uh, really, really trying to take the good parts of legacy finance and putting it on the blockchain. And I think that airdropping profits is a big like core value for me. And that's only possible on the, the Pulse Chain Network because that'll be uh, pennies to do instead of $500 per distribution, which is what it, I calculate would be on the Ethereum network. Yeah, I, I definitely understand what you mean about this auto compounding that has not been implemented in all things yet. I can't I can't stand having to hydrate things all the time and co yeah. compound. It, it's just not as user, user friendly. So I think yeah. the, road, the road to mass adoption is user friendliness within legacy finance. Yeah. Like you said, they're gonna need, they're gonna wanna take on the best protocols that are available. So um, I really yeah. think it's amazing that uh, that you're geared up and doing this in a whole different. Yeah, my, my dream my dream is that someone would you know invest in the project and then go do something else for whatever, and then they just open up their wallet and there's a bunch of stable coin in there. Like that would be amazing, and and I think that that's sort of the what we should be driving towards as like a as a standard for distributing, you know, yield, profits, whatever. Um, so hopefully people start taking on to that. So there's a there's a lot of my core values I'm trying to integrate into this product um, that I think makes sense to me and the way I want to implement it. Um, I need to I need to get the financing to make this all happen. So. Uh, hopefully people will kind of catch on to the vision. 
Well, all I know is that uh, we're going to put this out there for you. And I want to know a little bit about the movie itself, because some people are going to want to get in just because it's a movie. Yeah, of course. So, so it's, this movie is a crime comedy. Uh, and it's, it's, it's basically, uh, uh, it's, it's similar to burn after reading or big Lebowski, uh, Basically, the logline is Shane, a struggling 30-year-old caddy, stumbles into a new gig, uh, and he ends up being a private eye for a New Jersey nightclub owner. So he, he basically ends up uh, as a golf caddy. He gets into a sticky situation with like a mob guy, and then gets wrapped into this whole dirty on deep underbelly world, and it sort of stumbles his way through it. But like in a smart, creative way. So sort of like the Big Lebowski in a way. But people don't make these kind of movies anymore. Uh, I think, I think it's something that, uh, you know, people need more of these kinds of movies uh, in today's world. And I, cause I think that a lot of the Hollywood reboots can get kind of tired of boring and all this sort of stuff. So I think getting really good, uh, you know, independent crime comedies is, I think, I think that it's going to make a big splash. That's great, man. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to elaborate about your project today before we get going? I, I would just say that, uh, you know, uh, jo join our uh, community. Oh, yeah, I will say that the, the script is done. We have a pitch video. You know, if you join our Telegram and you get to, you know, see our pitch video, we have a pitch video where we explain the story from Jeff, the director, and he includes the comp footage so you can get a sense of the, the story. And we're filming this October, no matter what. It just depends on how much we raise and we're making offers to cast. Um, and we actually signed Lacey Rogers, who was the the model from Richard's, one of Richard's streams, because I thought she would make a great Dina, which is one of the the other women in the... Uh, and and I, oh, I did want to add that the, the first 30 investors in the project, um, I will invite on set for investor day. So if you... Um, end up investing and you're one of the first 30 investors uh you can actually be in the film as an extra because there's a concert scene and you could be in the in the in the crowd uh so yeah please you know join and uh get learn more and then if you end up being one of the first investors you can actually be in the film which i think is pretty exciting plus partake in all this technological wet train we have uh we're trying to build <laughs> Hey, that's good stuff, man. Uh, I, I had watched a little bit of the interview with uh, Fashion Coder that you guys did, and I thought y'all did a really great job. She's an excellent girl. Love, love her in the space. And uh, just glad to get to know you, get to meet you, man. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you around again soon, talking more about your successes. I hope so, too. And I'll keep following your channel, Bear Market or not. Doesn't hey. matter. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> we'll pick it up again sometime, but we're never going to give up. We feel like we've carved out a nice niche here, so we're going to stick around. I love it. I love it. Protect protect yourself from the bear market by by investing in my project. I promise. Yes. Right. Okay. Those are good final <laughs> words right there. Don't forget it. From basketball, guys. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll see you all again soon. Thanks again for having me. Bye. Bye. Oh,